core prep. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how to break down your still life reference for our gestural constructive still life. So this is gonna be a pretty quick piece. It's gonna be our introduction to color. So we wanna be able to work really quickly to lay down the basic forms in your still life. So this step, although it's an extra step, is gonna help you work much faster. And as we're getting into more complicated forms, you know, it's gonna help you break down these even faster so you can build up their full detail and articulation. So a couple things that you're gonna need are from the back of your figure drawing textbook, the black one, you'll see some acetate quadrants. I just wanted to kind of briefly explain when I'm choosing to use each of these. So the first one is a full quadrant. So I use this when I'm doing more precise, detailed work. So we might use this when we do the landscapes or when I'm doing a portrait where I really want to hone likeness. That's when I'll use a full quadrant. It's just a way of avoiding graphing techniques where you can still draw with your own style and sensibilities, but have a little bit of compositional understanding of where things are on the page. The shorter quadrant, so the mini quadrant where we're seeing the crosshairs and then we're seeing you know just the sides i use this when i want to start in a more open system so if i'm working from life or if i'm trying to do a more quicker open style of drawing i think this is a more effective solution so i just want to explain why we use both in this class one's more specific than others in your unit in classroom you will see a slideshow which i've actually printed out so we can kind of go over it together of the still lives in the room so this is for the first three still lives, but this will give you an idea of where we want to head. And this is, you know, things that you guys have learned a little bit in the past, but now we're speeding them up and we're trying to work in a studio system where we're starting to, you know, kind of follow things, not necessarily step by step, but understanding how to build something up. So this would be the reference photo. We're always going to gesture an envelope first. So, you know, this, once we get strong, this could take us five to 10 minutes to get a gesture in. Then we'll start doing secondary passes. So this is straights, this is honing form. So making things not shape, but now form. Then from here, we're gonna always have shadow breakdowns. So this is if you wanted to shade certain areas of your drawing, both the cast shadows and the core shadows, the ones on the form. So this is dividing core light and core dark very broadly. And then we have our planar shading breakdown. So the cool thing, if we can really think in terms of planes, we can start working in any style, painting, drawing, color, black and white, doesn't matter. So this is really going to allow you to make things readable, but also work in a multitude of different styles, which is why we're focusing on it right now. I wanted to show you, I did this for all three still lifes. So I'm just going to go through them real quick. So enveloping and constructivism, secondary passes, cast and our core light and core dark breakdowns shadow passes so i did this for all three you know as you get to this still life it would just probably take an extra additional breakdown you can see in the first pass i'm not even drawing the flowers in you know now i'm starting to work my way outwards so the more complicated something is just the more passes that it will need but it's still underlying in this system so it'll also allow you to build up complexity so use this slideshow if you're working from one of these still lifes, you know, find the one that's closest to what you're working on and have that out as you're doing this breakdown. Okay, this shouldn't take you more than I would say a couple minutes, but since we're working from photos to help you still learn how to see through life, that's what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to take my photo. So I printed out my photo eight by 10 and I'm going to take my quadrant and I'm gonna line them both up so they should stack pretty well. There we go. And you could tape it. I'm not gonna tape it for the length of this video. I would just make a hinge like this. So just make a little hinge so we can reuse this again. So you can lift it up and also see your reference photo as you need to. Okay, so you can put taped little hinges on it. And then from here, you're gonna practice this the general breakdown. So you know, for the flower, I'm going to start off with enveloping. When I have something that's more of a cylinder, I'm going to start more with a gestural constructivist pass. So in the slideshow that you'll see that I did of the breakdowns, one thing you'll notice, go to the first page, is you'll see that 
when it comes to more complicated areas, you know, in general, even if it's rounded, I started off as straights. So it's going to give you more specific shape. And I've also separated my line work. I did that on purpose so you can see about how many lines it's taking me to break down some of these forms. When something's more organic or lumpy, you know, a lot of times pumpkins or or lemons, I might do like in this method, like I did the garlic. Um, usually the secondary pass for a pumpkin I would do with straights, actually. I'm going to reverse what I just said. For pumpkins for their first layout, though, so we can get the general shape. This is kind of what the approach might be, more of a bloated sort of tuna can where it's kind of curving out. And then I'm switching to straights as needed, so this part's a little straighter. The secondary pass, if that helps you, can also block that in. You know, the rest of the pumpkin I'm going to basically do with straights. You know, and trying to get a sense of the overlap. So you can take this as far as you feel like you need to. You might, you know, just breaking this down might be enough practice. And you can just draw it from life because you got a sense of it. But at any time, like we're teaching you guys studio practices, this is something you can always go back to. For something like this, I might do a practice breakdown of the flower. So I don't really like that particular breakdown I started with. I thought it was, there was a tangent in there. But I'm trying to keep it an open system and looking where the petals are starting to overlap. So I work my way from the center out and now towards the outside, that's making more sense. And same thing over here, I'm just gonna wrap and get my handles on. Handles are always the last thing that you'll do. So then as you're working, you have a couple options. If you feel like something's not working, especially for those of you guys working at home, you know, the first thing I would always do is you could lift up your hinge and you can look at this for a second, same way we did on the fabric, and get an idea of what you're breaking down first, okay? You guys will return these acetates when we're done with the class. You can just um, put them back in your folder once we're all done this unit. But for right now, just keep this hinged and attached and then you'll be ready for the next demo. All right, thanks guys.